Today, we have the master, the man, John Mosley. He's awesome because what I think is so neat is that he calls himself the popular nobody, which I think shows this guy's heart and his humi humility. He's got an accessory brand. He's got apparel. I mean, this guy's got his hands in everything. Um, he really, you know, he's been in the industry for 15 years now, and he has just seen this steady incline. I actually met John for the first time when I was working for Palm Mitchell Schools way back in the day. He was just kind of getting up and running in, in the industry. And even as a young man that was just coming out of school, he was already killing it. So we're so stoked to have him here. Um, he just launched a program through his website that you guys definitely have to check out that he's doing direct mentoring. But this guy has been on the, you know, in magazines. He's got an incredible, uh, you know, clientele that has been musicians, NFL players, I mean, all over the board. And, TV, commercials, movies. <sighs> like I said, we're just so blessed to have this dude on our channel today. So please, in the chats, please give a shout out. Say, welcome, John. Let's bring on Mr. John Mosley. <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up, man? How are you? Dude, I'm doing so good. I'm so happy to see your face on our channel today. That's all I have to say. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm happy to be on the channel. I'm happy that... Uh... We could make it happen. And yeah, let's have some fun today. For sure, dude. I'm not gonna take up too much of your time because as you as you shared with me, I think you've got a lot in store for us. You're gonna share a lot of different techniques, give them you it sounds like you're gonna really give them what they paid for it today, which is nothing, yeah. but you right. know. I'm gonna give you absolutely positively a bunch of nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro, go for it, man. <laughs> Thank you. Uh so I just want to thank you guys for joining us today. I know it's early in some places, late in some places, just right in other places. So I appreciate your support. Uh, I, I love doing stuff like this. When I get asked, you know, to come on board and do some some education, I'm very passionate about it. I feel like the knowledge that we have is to be shared. We have to give it out. And so that's what I'm here for. I'm here to give out my knowledge. You can see I have a nice little doll head behind me. I'm not going to give him a name. He already paid for his haircut. So no matter what comes out of this, he's already happy, right? But one thing I do want to ask you guys, please, can you give me a follow on Instagram? My Instagram is popular underscore nobody. It's on the screen, but we're missing the underscore in between popular and nobody. So popular underscore nobody. And uh, I'm working on 2021 education calendar right now. And we're doing everything on our website from haircutting, coloring, texture, to even photography information, how to make videos. So we're gonna do all of those great things on our website, which is www.thepopularnobody.com. And you'll be able to find that 2021 calendar. It's gonna be posted up real soon, but we have some great education happening over there in 2021. I held off from 2020 because I felt like in a time, you know, that uh, in a time with COVID, People didn't need education. They just need somebody to talk to. So they need to be mentally strong and, and understand how to grow their business instead of how do I cut hair? So that was kind of the shift I made. I did all kind of education to help people going back into their business, to sustain their business, to scale their business and grow their business, even though COVID was happening. So please check out the website, sign up for the email blast. Uh, all the great information that I could possibly give you will be right there. You see it on your screen. So I appreciate, appreciate all the love and support, but let's get to it today. So building off the fundamentals, I think one of the, one of the hardest things to do right now is understand going back to the fundamentals. We get so wrapped up in being creatives and we see all these amazing haircuts on Instagram. We see all these hair colors on Instagram. But the one thing that we forget to do is how to get back to the basics, the fundamentals. I always tell people, you could have a basketball team that could jump high. They can, you know, they block shots. They do all of that great stuff. But then you can have another team come in that's not as athletic they don't have the height. They don't have the strength of the other team. But what they do have is fundamentals. And nine times out of 10, that fundamentally sound team 
will be able to beat that more athletic team. Why? Because they stick to the basics. They know how to expand off the basics, but they know how to execute the basics really well. So today, I'm not going to actually finish a whole haircut. I'm going to walk you through a lot of different fundamental things that I feel is overlooked and sometimes not even useful. Um, so, yeah, let's get to it. Starting out, you must know your tools. I don't care what somebody tell you. I don't know your tools. Know what tools you have in your hand. And today I'm going to work with a rotary motor clipper. Why am I choosing a rotary motor clipper? Well, this particular clipper, it has 7,200 blade strokes. So what does that mean? What do you mean by 7,200 blade strokes? It means that this clipper motor is going to, that cutting blade is moving 7,200 times in a minute. So that's going to give me more of that machine finish look. We all know as we cut hair with scissors, we get more of that unfinished, not as polished look. But with that clipper, you're getting that polish. So my clipper today, I'm using my Andis cordless clippers, right? Of course, I always. So for marketing, always put your logo on your stuff so that people always know who you are. So starting out, we're going to talk about how I clip her over comb. And please, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask. You got the gangster rapper right here on right here on camera with you. So ask as many questions as you can so that we can. I love it. <laughs> it's so good, so, dude. Yeah, you got the gangster rapper on camera with you. So let's have some fun. I figured it was December. We all need a little Christmas joy, so why not? jump into this Christmas sweater, a Walmart special, right? So starting out, one of the basic fundamentals, if you're right-handed, that's your dominant hand. So if you're cutting on the left side of the head, starting out, you're working backwards. You're working to the front. So you're actually setting your guide at the round of the head when you should start on your dominant side. So I'm going to move over. Now I'm working on the proper side. And why is this the proper side? I'm building my short length that I want starting off that front hairline and working my way all the way around the head. So when I actually get to the left side of the head, which is my non-dominant side, I'm able to come back, stick my comb in and grab the piece of that guy from the back and cut it completely square. So let's talk about it. The first thing I want to do, this guy has a lot of hair. So I just want to come in, elevate, and I just want to remove that weight. I'm going to give myself a nice little clean area to work off of. Starting out. So, let's get that all squared away. I know my man has a lot of hair here. Now, now that I got this down and you can see, kind of got that you know, shag thing popping right now. It's pretty much in the mullet, the shag, whatever. Same thing, just different person called a different thing. I like Kentucky waterfall personally. So let's say this is your guest coming in. Realistically, this is a nice realistic lens for somebody to walk in. Now, as we look at this, one of the biggest fundamental challenges that we have is most people run right to a guard. When you run right to this guard, you typically put that guard on that clipper and you come in and you come right underneath and you scoop out. Now, what is the problem with working with just the guard? The guard is only going to define the shape of the haircut by the bone structure underneath the hair. So what if this guy has a flat parietal ridge on one side, but a predominant parietal ridge on the opposite side? So if we're relying on this guard to build this haircut out. We're actually going to lose out. And why are we going to lose out? Because we're not doing the guest a good service. Why? Because the guard is not going to make the length of the hair shape. It's not going to shape properly. So that's the most important thing. You want to make sure that the shape is proper. So for me, I use my guards more as a refinement tool and I use my comb as the building blocks. Right, so notice how thin this comb is. Can you guys see that? Can you see it? Pretty thin, right? Pretty flat. Now, 
when you're working with this type of barbering comb, notice the teeth are really tight together. So I actually get maximum tension when I lock in. And the comb is also the size of your guest's head. So if I stick this comb in, I'm covering up that whole side panel. So what does that mean, John? What, is that, what does that mean, gangster rapper, that, uh, you know, is covering up the whole side panel? That means I'm going to have the ability to increase my speed. Now I don't have to worry about having, say, for instance, we all love our wire spark combs. We all love them, right? But what I see most of the time when people are cutting hair with these, you're trying to clip her over comb with this cutting comb. Yes, it's a cutting comb, but it's not a barbering comb. The two difference. I know some of you probably like, well, obviously there's a difference. But why do we still use this to do clipper over comb work? The amount of blade exposure, that blade is not protected. So if you're somebody that's on this video right now on this live and you're watching and you're like, hmm, he's on to something. You're right. So if you get those lines inside of your haircuts, those steps, that's because your blade wasn't protected by the comb. Now, let's look at it from this standpoint. How much blade is exposed? None. The blade of the clipper is actually covered by the size of the comb. Now I have all the protection in the world. I don't have to worry about losing control of this haircut. So when I go in, whenever you're clipper over combing too, I don't know if you guys use masters or whatever clipper you use. If you have a lever on the side of your clipper, this is important. This lever moves. Most people, you believe me, they'll be like, I didn't even know that was there for that. So this is why we're covering the fundamentals, the lever. What it does, it gives you the ability, watch the blade. It gives you the ability to change the length of the blade. So if I open up this lever, and if you're cutting, or if you're holding a tool in your hand right now with me, that lever is to the floor. It's pointed down towards the ground. That means you're gonna leave longer length. If you close that lever up, that means you have shorter length. Anytime that I'm starting out clipper over comb to build my predominant shape, I want to start out with the clipper close. Why? I don't want the hair to be pushed. I want it to cut on contact. So let's start out with that. Let me know if you guys are following along. Let me know how you guys are loving this. Give us some comments, some questions, some something. I need some interaction. So that's <laughs> we really good, man. We have no questions so far. You're doing great. So when I clipper over comb, once again, something that's fundamental. If I stay here, and we all know, I'm 6'6", six, six, right? So this is my heart height. I'm cutting at heart height right now. But with me being up this high, it's a little uncomfortable to clip over comb with this elbow up because now you're putting a lot of pressure here in your shoulders, right? So let's scoop my guy over a little bit. So if I'm here, my elevator is not going to go up too much more. It's a very uncomfortable feeling once you get to a certain point. So this is what I want you to do. Take your clipper, roll it over, and put it in your palm. Notice the elbow. My elbow is tucked into my side. I could go as high as I want to. This is not an uncomfortable feeling. I'm not putting any strain on my neck and shoulder. I could have full mobility as well. So this is why you'll see me switch to a clipper in palm position. Come in, hold my comb C-shape. I lock that comb in between my two fingers here. Roll, lock. One finger up top, thumb underneath. Why is this important? We're gonna to get to that in a second. So I'll come in, stick my comb in, and pull away from the head. There's the shape that I want. Go in and make sure that I tighten everything up. Now, what was the most important thing about that? All of it. But actually, the most important thing was, notice I tilted the comb out. Why did I tilt the comb out? Because I needed to leave my length longer at the top of the parietal ridge. I wanted to make sure that I had a building contour. So what does that building contour mean? Well, let me break it down for you. Hey, John, could you bring the mannequin a little closer to camera? 
Thank you. So now let's let's look at this building contour. So the reason why I wanted to build out is because I wanted to create this look here. It's a little drastic with the two cones right now. I get it. But just so you have a visual, you can see exactly where I'm at. You got that? So what is that building contour? That gives me the ability to leave the hair longer in the parietal ridge and start my graduation. We all should know graduation short to long. Same thing in the Cosmo world, same thing in the barbering world. Graduation is graduation. It's not cap and gallon walking across. It's short to long. So that's what this gives me the ability to create, that graduation, short to long. Now, that's a building contour. Remember in the beginning of this when I talk about, you know, what happens if that guy is flat on that one side of his head and then protruding on the other side? Well, protruding, guess what we have to do? We have to shrink the amount of hair that's present. Why are we shrinking the amount of hair that's present on the protruding side, but not on the, the, the flat side? The reason being is because we have to contour. Ladies, you guys contour your cheekbones every day to make them pop. We got to do the same thing for our guests as well for guys. We have to bring his head shape balance. So if this was my building contour, let's change it up a little bit. If this side was the protruding side, let's lean it. Why are we leaning that? Can you guys see that there? The reason why we're leaning this is so that it's shorter at the parietal ridge where it's protruding out, longer underneath, so that when we balance this haircut out, it gives us the silhouette of having the perfect head shape. This is why I love using clipper over comb, because I have the ability to change the shape of the haircut the way that I want to. You guys still following me? Yeah, John, we, we do have one question that I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, Jane's asking clipper over comb versus scissor over comb. Why do you choose one over the other? That is a great question. And who did that come from? Jane? That is from Jane Rowe. Jane Rowe, thanks for coming on with us today. I appreciate the support. Um, this is why I prefer clipper over comb. Why would I spend most of my time when I know I'm going for a precision type haircut barbering precision and scissor over comb all of this. How much time would it take me to scissor over comb this haircut where I can take this clipper and cover up that whole panel at one time? Most guys, they want more of that precision look. They want more of that sharp barbering fate look. So for me, that's the thing that I like to do. I'd rather go clipper over comb first. And then if I'm going in to do some detail work to finish, that's when I'll come back and I'll scissor over comb just to soften to give it that lived in look. So clipper over comb is not a lived in look. Clipper over comb is definitely more aggressive. And I'm not being perfect right now, by the way. I'm just going in to knock this length off. That's awesome, man. I like that concept of using the speed of the clipper to, like, even if you are looking for something that's a little softer and use the speed of the clipper, then maybe come back in to, to soften up those lines to keep things efficient and get through those haircuts in, in a timely fashion. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm pretty sure most of our audience right now, Andrew, is cosmetologist, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. your cosmetologist typically... If you're not a men's cutting specialist or if that's just not what you do, but you want to make more money in between those colors, you have that 35 to 40 minute window. So how would you get another? It's COVID. We got to maximize the time we can be in the shop and we have to get as many clients as we can squeeze in. So why not put a guy in between each one of your colors and use that 40 minute window to actually make more money? So when we're looking at it, barbers always work speed. They always, that was what barbers was built off of, was cutting hair with speed and precision. So clipper over comb allows you that speed, but it also gives you the opportunity to create awesome shapes. So I hope that hope, hope that helped. So now I'm just getting this guy all set. So we talked about contours. 
We talked about that being the building block. We talked about a little scissor over comb versus clipper over comb. So now let's knock this rest of this length out. Like I said, I'm not looking to be perfect right now. I just want to get this guy cut out the way so that you guys can see. Now, one of the hardest things for a lot of people that's new to clipper over comb and even scissor over comb, one of the hardest things that I, I get questions about all the time is how do you not cut that corner off? How do you not lose your guide when you're working from flat panel to round of the head? Easy. Here's another fundamental tip. You guys ready for it? Fundamental tip. We're at the round of the head here. Anytime you make two straight lines, you get a what? A corner. So if you extend the corner here, and then you extend that corner here, and let's shrink it to the head shape. Let's see if I could get a good, good angle here. If we, so you guys can kind of see it here and here. Right, we're looking straight down that line. Now let's move this comb in. So that's where we're at. So what we have left, two straight lines make a corner, but let's talk about geometric shapes. Square, square, and those two lines connect. Now inside that comb placement, I have a triangle. That triangle is this corner that I have to knock off along with this point here. So instead of worrying about trying to just round this haircut out while you're working all the way through, it's much easier to make a square shape here, a square shape here, and then when you come into the corner, what should happen? Your guide is now here, your guide is now in the back. So you go right to that corner. Reference point, your mastoid bone. There's your corner right there at that mastoid. So you pick it up, there's my guide that drops out, Here's my guide that drops out of the back of the comb. And then there's my corner. And that's how you round it out without losing consistency in your haircut. Now I can continue to work my way up this back panel and work around. It's the same way on the opposite side. Point, point, round that corner, knock it out. Andrew, are they, are they with us? Are they following us? I'm doing good, dude. And just something that you mentioned there that an old mentor of mine kind of talked about too. He's like, since blades on like a clipper or shears, since they're straight lines, creating roundness in the head is it's almost like a stop sign, right? Like it's kind of just keep knocking off that corner, and that's what creates that roundness to it. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So I break it down that way because we all are taught haircutting is geometric shapes, triangles, circles, squares. And then we use those principles to create, that's where the creativity come in. We create off of those principles. So why not use those same principles even when you're working in men's hair cutting? Notice in Cosmo, there will be a lot of different sections happening here if you were doing a haircut. Right. In barbering, it's not a bunch of sections, but it is. You take one panel here, that's one section. One panel here, that's your second, third. So I actually have four panels, but only one is clipped up. So I'm breaking the haircut down in my head as a smaller picture to create a bigger picture. Because most of the guys that's coming into your salons are barbershops. They're giving you these photos off of Instagram, Pinterest, Google, Facebook. I want this haircut. But really, are they looking at the haircut? Are they really work, worried about the style? Mm, sure. Something to think about. Most people come in and say, I want a pompadour. Where a pompadour is not a haircut. A pompadour is a styled, that's a finished look. The haircut actually happens underneath. Yes, so sir. when we break this down, see, I told y'all, y'all better go to that website and get that. It's coming. So let's talk about tapering a little bit. Andrew, you want to talk a little bit about tapering? Let's do it. You, what, have, what, you what? actually had some questions about um, fading, tapering, stuff like that. So this is perfect. I love where we're going. See, I knew what the I just know what the people need and want. That's what happened when you're a gangster rapper. Uh, so let's talk about tapering. 
When you talk about tapering and fading, fade. So let's break this down. What is a taper? A taper is a fade in a small amount of area that normally lives in the temple and in the nape. Right now, can you have low, medium, high in the nape? Of course you can. You have to have that. You have to have that in the temple taper as well. You also need to have low, medium, high on any fading. So I'm a. I'm sure my, my, my guy here, he's not going to mind if I mark him up a little bit. So we're going to draw on his face. He said he wanted a couple of face tattoos with his haircut today. So that's what we're going to give him. So when you're looking at this doll head, let's break this down. All your fade points are going to start right in that temple. That's your starting reference point. Now, we have this bone. We have two bones that plays a crucial part. One in, moment. Oh, sorry, sir. We have two. We have two crucial bones that play a major part in how I cut hair. One being the occipital bone. The next one, sorry, mastoid bone, and the one being the occipital bone. Why are these two important? I'm gonna break it down for you. Ready? Let's take you on this journey. Clipper open, so you can. Well, actually, let's close it so you can see. So if I'm going in, let's get this kind of cleaned up right here. So there's my point, right? Going back to cutting straight lines, there's my square. There's my corner. Now, if a guy comes in and says, hey, I would love to get a, a medium or a low, let's, let's start out low and we'll work our way up. This guy says, I want a low fade temple. Now, right at that mastoid, what do I do? I change the angle of my clipper. And I work my way around. So now let's look at that slight dip I created. Why is this considered a low fade? Let's remove all this extra shag. So why is this considered a low fade? This is, this is the most common fade out right now is a drop fade. And why is that the most common? Is because most guys are going with longer length up top. So we have to create this illusion of that occipital bone being more predominant so that we can have that length coming off the uh, crown in order to connect the dot to give us that shape. So mastoid, temple. That's when I start my dipping process. As we work to the back, remember I said the occipital bone plays a crucial part. Well, where does this come in at? Your occipital bone helps with placement. So when that guy comes in and he says, hey, I would like that low fade, or he says, I want a low bald fade or low soft fade. What does that word mean? So this is how you break it down. Low is where he's talking about placement on the occipital bone. He wants that fade to start underneath that occipital bone and creep and graduate up, right? Now, when he says bald, I'm gonna put a number right here on this doll head. Number one. Number one is the shortest point of your haircut. Why is that the shortest point of your haircut? Because that's going to tell you ball fade, soft fade. So when you hear the word ball, that means they don't want any hair inside of one. When you hear soft fade, that means they want hair present inside of segment one. You guys follow me? Andrew, you there with me? You following this? Dude, that's awesome. What a great, easy way to, yeah, you're hitting the right button for sure. Gangster rapper, right? So. One is the indicator, hair or no hair. That's when that bulb come in. Occipital bone comes in when he tells you low, medium, or high. So now let's clear this out. I hope you guys are enjoying this right now, getting some good, good, awesome education in. So let's transition. Now I'm going to go into a guard. I'm using the number two guard just for now. And I continue. to work my way 
around his hair, haircut and head shape. Hey, John, I might have missed it. What, what guard is that? This is the number two guard. Okay, thank you. There you go. Number two guard. So as I work my way around, now notice I'm flicking. Why am I flicking? You see barbers do this all the time, or you might see some barbers that just do this. Me personally, I prefer to flick. Why? Because once again, we're graduating this haircut. We don't want to put a hard line into something that we won't be able to get out. So that's why the flick is there. Some barbers reference heel to toe. I just call it in at 90, out at 45. So now that we have this in, I'm going to make another mark on the head. Now you see we have number two. So if you got the memo, I was talking about a 39 fade technique, right? Today, oh, that one's gone. We are talking about a 39 fade technique. So where do you think three is gonna come from? Right here or right here? Three is coming from up top. We don't worry about three. Three is a total different haircut. But what I have to do is blend the rest of this up. So two, I really break down to two to two and a half because we want to have that length there. Now watch how quick and easy I create this shape from what you guys see here. Have that hard ledge. Once again, clipper over comb. That number two is now my guide. I come in, let that guide fall out. And I work clipper over comb and I follow that section underneath. Now, just like a cosmetologist, section, angle, accuracy is a real thing, guys. So I followed that same exact section, and now I'm building off of that. So now I come back up, still using that number two as that guide, as that flick out. And notice how I rolled my comb back. Why did I roll my comb back? because I already have the guide that I want. So I don't want to cut that guide anymore. I need to protect that length. So I create that building contour. So now you can see the shape that I've created. Crazy, right? So John, I'm I'm curious. So you went from and no no guard on that one area. Yes, sir. A, a two guard on that on on the second panel. So <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, how come jumping all the way up to a two and not using like a one guard in in there? So time is what? Money. We're in this business of what? Making money. But we're in the business of people too, right? So we, we gotta, gotta value our, we, gotta, <laughs> we gotta value our people time in order to make the right amount of money. If we stay on course time wise, we'll make a lot of money. So the reason why is because think about everything you hear. Anything after a two should be done what? I would clipper, say clipper, clipper over comb, scissor over comb. Right. So all we did was come in and give ourselves the three segments that we needed, one, two, and three, I eliminate a lot of the fade work because I built my shape. Shape is the most important thing. If we could keep everything in shape, to blend this line out is not hard. So I cut out that bulk instead of switching from a two and then going to a three guard, going to a four. If I pick up this four guard, that four guard is really right there at the top. Mm, gotcha. So I, I know that. So because I put that two there, I know this is a four. I don't have to worry about nothing. So I just create the shape and expand out to speed, increase my speed. Now when I come back. You're kind of blocking the big part of the shape, and then you'll kind of come back and refine it. 
that's that's all you got to do. I love this. So now I take this one sixteenth guard and I'll just start blending. Still working that same flick. Close it up. Anytime I blend, I always start with my guards open just so that I could preserve length and push that hair to give myself a little more uh, wiggle room. So then come back in. Close that up, make sure I get everything nice and even. Of course, this is a doll head, so don't worry about my man's follicles. Man, if you guys haven't tried to fade on a, on a mannequin head and make it look polished, he's doing one hell of a good job. I'll tell you that because it is. If you can make a mannequin head look good with a fade, humans are a cakewalk. <laughs> so now you see where we started, right? Now we're coming to a, a polished side. So now, connected the dots, I'm right back at the length where my comb can grab. So 90 degrees, blunt cut. We're building that shape. Now we got to blend this shape. Sometimes you'll see people come in, pull that hair, go vertical here. But what happens to this hair behind that? If you're taking this hair and pushing it over, we're actually creating over direction. We don't want over direction. We just want to blend it together. So I hold that comb still at a horizontal placement, close that clipper up. I have my guides in place, roll that comb out. And then this is how I finish off that blend without having to use guards. Because of my comb, I could get really tight to finish out this blend. That's such a great explanation. The Because you do, you see some people come in more vertically with that handle comb, and then sometimes you see people do what you just did. And that's such a great explanation of why you're not going to create any upper direction if you're working with a vertical or a horizontal like that. Right. I don't. I prefer not to create over direction. I don't want to overwork myself. Right. And so now, all I'm doing is going in with this one guard and coming in and cleaning up whatever needs to be cleaned up that the comb didn't grab. Just that fine detail, and that will complete our side. Nice. Hey, um, we have a we do have a couple questions. One from I think Nasana and Samantha. How how long does a haircut like this typically take you in the salon or in the shop? Uh, when in my younger days, before I became a gangster rapper, um, my my haircuts typically I could work anywhere from seven to twenty minute range. That was kind of where I was at. But then I realized it's not about how many clients I put in my chair. It's about putting the right clients in my chair. So what I did was I focused not on turn and burn, but quality, spending that time with that client, uh, letting them know I appreciate them, being appreciative of their time. So then I scaled back. So now I take a, roughly about 30 to 45 minutes of haircut just so that I could give them that quality time, give them somebody to talk to, because we all we all need help right now. We need conversations from people. That's so. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that too, because I think that that's an important message for our industry just across the board, because sometimes we do get hung up and to make more money, I have to put more butts in the chair. But what you just said is so key. If you increase the quality, then you can increase the price too, right? Right. And so another little tip, I know a lot of us, we understand the value of the, the price of the tools that we use. Our clients don't. So whenever I get a new tool, I always talk to them about what I spent on the tools because I want them to know I'm spending the most money possible to get the best tools possible to give them the best haircut and experience possible. So that's a, another gem for you. So you see me using this little brush now. Oh, that was not good. But this little brush here, why is this so crucial? All that 
extra hair that might be stuck to the scalp, I want to brush this off. So I make sure I'm not overworking, overcutting. And so I, I choose to use this brush. I, I recommend highly go get one. So now that we have this down, I'm going to show you guys back into that taper world. When you look at a taper, remember I said we have low, medium, high. Just like a fade, we could push this low, medium, high. But I'm going to talk about the taper right now. So watch this line. That's going to be your low taper, your mid taper, your high taper. Notice how I put them on an angle. Why is that line on an angle and it's going to blow out this way? The reason why is because anytime you remove hair from behind this ear, you're actually doing a fade. So you want to make sure that you stay consistent with your taper. So low, medium, high, all going from temple area to mid temple and uh, parietal ridge, low parietal ridge area, back to the natural fold of that ear. That's where you want them lines to meet because that's going to separate a taper to a fade. A fade is all the way around the head, behind the ear as well. A temple taper is not. Now, when you look at it from a Nate standpoint, can you guys follow me here? Low, medium, high. So the rule of thumb on the taper, you do not want to extend that taper past that earlobe. If you go past that earlobe, you're too high. Once again, we're running the same, same uh, thought process. You don't want to go behind that ear. So there's your reference point. I never knew that there was a difference in that terminology, John. I think I always thought they were just interchangeable. So what you're saying is that taper more specifically kind of um, is like the temple and the neckline. The fade is more the bulk of the interior. Then. Right. Wow. Okay. So, Andrew, stay right there. I'm going to draw okay. this. Right here, dude. So now if I take this and I took this temple, the, the taper, and I remove this area here, I have just made a fade. Hmm. So that's why it's so crucial to stay inside of these areas opposed to pushing up into. Okay. You following me there? I'm I'm actually fixing uh, so many of the problems I've had with this. <laughs> as it's like in my head. Uh, man, my next couple of male clients are going to be really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could help. And I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people yeah. because I think sometimes we look at these videos and we look at uh, no disrespect to uh, the repost pages on social media, but you see a lot of people drawing diagrams and they're not accurate, nor is the placement accurate, nor is the, the tools are accurate. So I want to give the realistic knowledge that I have of what barbering is, what the essence is. And these are fundamental basic skills that most people don't have because we're getting too creative. We're not being that team that could walk in any building and be anybody with fundamentals. I love the fundamentals. It make a lot of sense. So for me, I'm gonna show you guys something else. So we, we discussed a little fading work, right? So let's remove these clips and get down and dirty. So most people, they see me cut the top. And I always talk about understanding and knowing your cut count. What is your cut count? That's your rhythm. How many times you open and close that scissor? That is a big thing for me. So understanding my cut count is very important because as an educator, sometimes we might be teaching and talking and cutting and we don't look at the haircut, right? So maybe we're talking to a guest and you gotta know what is the best way? Or what is that rhythm, right? So for me, come in and grab that Mohawk center section. So I predetermine my length. How do I get the predetermined length for the top of three, right? So actually, let me let me back this up a little bit because I didn't complete the 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 nine inside that 39. 
So you have one, two, three sections. Now you have inside of each section, you have a subsection. And those subsections is what's going to create, excuse me, that gradient. That's what's going to allow you to have that 39 fade technique. So that's how you complete that. Now, coming off the parietal ridge, coming off that crown, that is going to determine the length up top. The rule of thumb for shape and balance, you have to have an inch and a half to two inches longer than what you have on your side and the top of segment two. So if I'm looking at my side, I'm about an inch, inch and a half maybe. So for balance purposes, if this is a disconnected top, once again, going back to the basics, I'm going to come off to the left side of my guy's head and I'm going to start right at that crown area, high crown. I'll pull that out, grab my guide. As you can tell, my rhythm is three. Now, I want you guys to understand something. Yes, I might have a lot of hair in my fingers, but I'm not cutting past the second knuckle. You always hear about that in beauty school, but let's, let's really think about this. Why am I not cutting past my second knuckle? This is the perfect tutorial for this. I can't get my scissor through my front finger. That's where most of my tension lives. Now, look how that scissor came right through my finger. I have no tension there. So my grip is a whole lot looser. So I'm using that for comfort, but I'm not necessarily cutting all the way back. Andrew, was that was did that help right there? Did let me know. So yes, I so tell me again with the side, the length on the side in comparison to that length that you put in on the top. So balance. Mm -hmm. Our middle has to be two inches longer than what's on the side, or an inch and a half longer than the side. So now that I know the side, I'm going to show you how to make this top connect really quick and easy off of just balance. I have my guide here. So now I have a guide in the center of my haircut. I have a guide on the outside. Once again, we're connecting the dots, two straight lines. So I'll come in. Take my section. Now I'll come underneath and I'm gonna grab that guy. I'm gonna extend my fingers out. Three, there's the connection. So there's my graduation. Now I come up, extend, extend, extend. There's the corner. That's how I connect the dots in my haircuts. That's so simple. That's amazing. <laughs> Great. We've got a couple of students on too. Like I've, I've, and I promise I am going to share some of your questions with John. I'm not purposely ignoring them. I just want want to let him get through these first couple pieces because they're so strong. But those of you that are students out there, this is by far the easiest I've ever seen someone explain this. This is awesome. Same principle. Reset. So I made two straight lines. I just cut off the corner. Most of us take our time and we start rounding out that corner. And then what happens when we start rounding out off this head shape? Remember, there's a bone structure right here. So the highest point in between our two sections now is right here. So if we go in and we start cutting underneath that, what happens? Short hair does what? It's got more muscle. So because it has more muscle, it's going to stand that hair up. So we don't want to. We want to extend out, knock the corner off here, connect the dot, and then come back and pick up the corner and run it right to our guide where we still have all that length underneath so that it doesn't push that hair. Connect the dot to the front. We already have it. We go right to that same corner, extend out, Make our cut. There's that corner. Extend. Don't get lazy. And make the cut. Now I just connected the dots. And when I turn it sideways so you could see, always remember cross-checking, right? 
there we have it. Still short to long, all the way across. Nice. How about the fabric of the hair? What, um, like, what would you change for like super tight curls or like adjust to textured hair? So if I'm working with textured hair, of course, I'm not gonna pick this up in finger and do my work in finger, right? right? So what I would actually do is the same concept. I'll go into a guard. So I might take a number six guard and cut the length down and then still clipper over comb my shape in and then just start the blending process a little different. So it'll be a lot more clipper over comb to work that curl, work that curl, work that curl to finally get the shape in that I want. Nice. So same principles, same concept, just different. Tool. Kind of approach. Right. The tool placement is going to be different. The, the guard might be a different number. So I'm either going to go higher up in size or lower in size. I'm either going to use more clipper over comb, less clipper over comb. Uh, for me, I, I just love the fundamentals, man. Like to, to be able to teach people this type of stuff and show, I know students all the time, they, they get so caught up and worried about not being able to connect their guide. So here's another quick trip for you guys. If you, if you lose your guide, another quick thing to do, um, I know we're running out of time here. I wish I could spend all the time with you in the world. But if we're, if we're, if you're a student or if you're a professional and you, you lose track of your guide, one of the things to do to set your guide is get a little more moisture in there. One of the quick and easiest things to do, take this hair and that's your section, right? Let's move this out of my way. I got a little peppermint oil inside of my, my water bottle too, so it always smells great. So if you have trouble finding your guide, here's a little tip. Stick your comb in, especially if you scissor over comb or clip over comb, you get lost. Grab that hair. Predetermine your length. And then come in and set your guide. So now, once your guide is preset, how easy would it be to come back and scissor over comb to a consistent guide? And I would walk that all the way around the parietal ridge so that my guide is consistent all the way through. And then I have the option to scissor over comb or clip over comb without losing track of my work. Yeah, perfect. Do you ever start your do you ever start your haircuts more from the top? So in some cases, that's a great question, Andrew, by the way. And for some cases, I do start at the top. And when would those cases happen? Say if I'm working with somebody with a medium to curl a medium fabric, but they have a slight wave or curl pattern. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I keep that shape and keep that curl intact. So I'll cut the top first and drop down into my zone two area just a little bit to create a guide to work my clipper work into so that I don't lose the shape of the haircut and I'm not running everything boxy. I want this haircut to be the greatest haircut it could be for this person, not for the next guy that come in with the same type of hair cut because their head shapes are different. So I always predetermine off a head shape, fabric style, fabric pattern. How am I going to work this haircut? And it's either going to be starting at the top predetermining my length or create my shape underneath to then predetermine my finished look overall. Beautiful. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're kind of starting from uh, what what's going to kind of have the greatest impact to the, to the haircut, build that first, then work through. Correct. Uh, that's awesome. Because, yeah, I think sometimes we just get, I, I can speak for myself, I get stuck in my pattern of just how I approach something. So um, because I'm comfortable with that pattern, I just kind of, okay, go to that right front corner, start at the bottom, work up, like go through this. And this this has a mindfulness to it that's quite excellent. I will. I, that's what I said, man. I, I felt like the fundamentals, the basic stuff is mind blowing because we get so caught up in getting away from it. But it really is the foundation. Now, just imagine. I was educating this and I showed you a lot of different techniques. I showed you so many different things that you could take away and apply them to any haircut. You could do this same type of technique 
on the next guy coming to sit in your chair. So take these principles, take these fundamental skills, take these systematic approaches that I take and watch how your revenue go up. Watch how you allow yourself to become faster inside of your men's cutting world. And please, if you do have any more questions, message me on Instagram. On my, uh, I do answer my messages. So please message me on Instagram. Uh, if you would like to follow me for more education, I'm telling you 2021 education from the popular nobody brand, not just myself, but my whole team included. And follow us on the website, www.thepopularnobody.com because sign up for it because we're only going to have limited amount of space, even though it's virtual. I know a lot of people want to jam pack the virtual situation because you can. I don't. I want to be able to have this time to talk to people, answer the questions, get that clarity. So it will be limited space on all the classes that we do. And we're also going to give you downloadable PDFs so that you can walk away from the class with the same material that we were teaching off of. Because what's class without books? And we want to be able to give you that extra help. So, Andrew, I appreciate you. Tell Sam I said what up. And I appreciate the opportunity to come share my love for barbering with the whole entire network that you guys have built and that you guys are continuing to build. I think what you're doing is awesome. And I couldn't be more happier to be able to join you guys. Yeah. Thank you, man. We we know your time is very precious. You're an incredibly busy guy. You got a lot of stuff going on. So we're so thankful that you would offer some time to the community to just honestly, like I've just increased my value as a hairdresser so much by watching those tips. It's amazing. Cause like you said, yeah, I kind of said, Oh yeah, to you students, this is great. But doing hair for 21 years dude <laughs> you know? and i just learned a bunch from your foundation so um you know on behalf of all of us here at sambia thank you again so much for your dedication of time um guys again if you have any questions for him he is so great at communication and, and getting back to you through his social channel so definitely reach out to him at, at popular underscore nobody and um i hope we can have you back again soon man. Yeah, let's do it. And if you would like to get any of my team members, just let me know. We could talk about it. I got a, I got a cutter that I think is gonna. She's like Lady Gaga when it on our team. So that's a huge compliment. But that's how much I believe in what she can do with a pair of scissors in her hand. Amazing. Well, thank you, my friend. You're an amazing gangster rapper. You're an amazing. <laughs> You're an amazing barber and educator. And also, guys, if you don't follow him, if you just want some fun and inspiration, just go to the Man's inspirational channel and you get a laugh every third video. Every third video. <laughs> hey, man, the world needs laughter, man. It said kids laugh more than adults, so I'm trying to change that narrative. Yeah, you're awesome, dude. Thank you so much, John. We'll see you soon, buddy. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, guys, I hope you got as much as we did out of that. That was incredible. Um, just a reminder, tomorrow, Wednesday, we have Wellness Wednesday. We've got our guest, Jetty Azuma, who's a rites of passage guide and a men's leadership coach. We're going to be talking about showing up fully within our relationships. And, of course, we still have 40% off site-wide going on. So if you need tools, this is a great opportunity. But... More importantly, we want to continue to give back to the PDA. It's actually not the disaster relief fund as it is on the, the post here, but it's actually the COVID aid fund, especially with what's happening right now. We need to support those fellow hairdressers. So we're going to continue to do that. And we're going to continue to support you through education. So lots more education coming right here at Sambia. Have a great day.